It's not the way about the bag. It is March the 16th, 2019. I'm at Whole Foods in Annapolis, Maryland. And now um, I'm Rhonda Arrington Hyphen Bay. As your wife, as a Hebrew Muslim, I am a, and my, more, my nationality is Moorish American. I'm about to read um, one of our Moorish state papers, the Holy Quran Circle 7, chapter 44. It's called The Holy Instructions from the Prophet Misery. And this is March the 16th, 2019. And I just, uh, for a moment of, again, pressure, um, someone probably in, a, in, in this uh, facility is um, attacking um, my back. So these, those that have the telepathic code, but not, what I'm doing now is giving a testimony, uh, is probably attacking somehow or putting pressure um, as I'm reading here. Um, um, I don't have the telepathic code. I, my son and Monty Gray hyphen baby, we both rejected this science. We are not able to send um, um, pain to someone or cause pain to someone in that manner. And as a Hebrew Muslim, we are not. Um, we don't. We don't want to do that because our ancient ancestors did not behave in that manner. A lot of times, um, you, we are among experiments. These are experiments that are used. Uh, to do certain things of this manner and um, those who um, are possessed by unclean spirit. So the hospitals, they've been doing this for a long time. The hospitals that are in business to make money but not heal have have a gold pot, a uh, pot of gold. They like really, I'm pretty sure they're very happy of this creation and the pharmacy and um, other places that have made money off of ignorance because we didn't know that we were among these unclean spirits. So now I'm about to read because this is definitely um, an extremely unclean spirit. Spirits that we are among. Okay. Um, so, um, I'm reading the Holy Quran, Circle 7, um, Chapter 44, and once again, this is, um, as a Moorish American, this is one of our Moorish American state papers. It says, Feeble and insufficient as thou art, O man, and good, frail and inconstant as thou art in pleasure, Yet there is a thing in which thou art strong and unshaken. Its name is misery. It is the character of thy being, the prerogative of thy nature. In thy breast alone it resides. Without thee, there is nothing of it. And behold, what is its source but thy own passions? He who gave thee these gave thee also reason to subdue them. Exert it, and thou shalt trample them under thy feet. Thy interest, thy interest, interest into the world, is it not shameful? Thy destruction, is it not glorious? Lo, Men adorn the instrument of death with gold and gems and wear them above their garments. He who beget a man hide his face, but he who killeth a thousand is honored. Know thou, notwithstanding, that in this is error. Custom cannot alter the nature of truth, neither can the opinion of man destroy justice. The glory and the shame are misplaced. There is but one way for a man to be produced. There are a thousand by which he may be destroyed. There is no praise or honor to him who giveth being to another. But triumphs 
and empire are the rewards of murder. Yet he who hath many children hath as many blessings. And he who hath taken away the life of another shall not enjoy his own. While the savage cursed the birth of his son and blessed the death of his father, does he not call himself a monster? The greatest of all human ills is sorrow. To much of this thou art born unto. Add not, add not unto it by thy own perverseness, perverseness, perverseness. Grief is natural to thee, and is also about thee. Pleasure is a stranger, and visit thee by times. Use well thy reason, and sorrow shall be cast behind thee. And the vis and the visits of joy shall remain long with thee. Every part of thy frame is capable of sorrow, but few and narrow are the path that leads to delight. Pleasures can be admitted only simply, but pains rush in a thousand at a time. As the blaze of straw fade, as soon as it kindle, so pass away the brightness of joy, and thou know not what become of it. It says, as the blaze of straw faded, as soon as it is kindled, so pass away the brightness of joy, and thou know not what become of it. Sorrow is frequent, pleasure is rare. Pain come of itself. Delight must be purchased, grief is a mix. But joy want not is allow alloy of bitterness. As the sound hath as the sound's health is less perceived than the lightest malady, so the highest joy touch us less deep than the smallest sorrow. As the sound health is less perceived than the lightest malady, so the highest joy touch us less deep than the smallest sorrow. We are in love with anguish. We often fly from pleasure. When we purchase it, cost it not more than it is worth. Reflection is the business of man. A sense of his state is his first duty. But who remembers himself a boy? Is it not in mercy? Then that sorrow is allotted unto us. Man foresee the evil that is to come. He remember it when it is past. He considered not that the thought of affliction Wound is deeper than the affliction itself. Think not of thy pain, but when it is upon thee, and thou shalt avoid what most hurt thee. He who weep before he need, weep more than he need, and why? But that he loveth weeping. The stag weep not till the spear is lifted against him. Nor do the tears of the beaver fall till the hound is ready to seize him. Men anticipate death by the apprehension of it, and the fear is greater misery than the event itself. Be always prepared to give an account of thy action. 
And the best death is that which is less premeditated. Islam. Wisdom. I, I want to read a part of this again. It says, Sorrow is frequent. Pleasure is rare. Pain comes of itself. Delight must be purchased. Grief is unmixed. But joy want not is an alloy of bitterness. As the, as the sound health is less perceived than the lightest malady, so the highest joy touch us less deep than the smallest sorrow. We are in love with anguish. We often fly from pleasure. When we purchase it, cost it not more than it is worth. Reflection is the business of man. A sense of his state is his first duty. But he remembered himself as a boy. Is it not in mercy then that sorrow is allotted unto us? Man foresee the evil that is to come. He remembereth it Consider not the thought of affliction wounded deeper than the affliction itself. Think not of thy pain, but when it is upon thee, and thou shalt avoid what most hurt thee. He who weep before he need, weep more than he need, and why? But that he loved weeping. The stag weep not till the spear is lifted against him, nor do the tears of the beaver fall till the hound is ready to seize him. Men anticipate death by the apprehension of it, and the fear is greater misery than the event itself. Be always prepared to give an account of thy actions, and the best death is that which is less premeditated. Okay? So that is um, 44 of the Holy Crown Circle 7, one of our Moorish American State papers. Now I'm going to read chapter 10. It says, Jesus spake unto the unity of Allah and man to the Hindus. Benares is the sacred city of Brahms. And in Benares, Jesus taught. Eudraca was his host. Eudraca made a feast in honor of his guests, and many high-born Hindu priests and scribes were there. And Jesus said to them with much delight, I speak to you concerning life, the brotherhood of life. The universal Allah is one, yet he is more than one. All things are one. But the sweet breath of Allah, all life is bound in one. So, if you touch a fiber of a living thing, you send a thrill from center to the outer bounds of life. And when you crush beneath your foot the meanest worm, you shade the throne of Allah and cause the sword of life to tremble in its cheek. The birds sing out a song for men, and men vibrate in unison to help it sing. The ant constructs its home, the bee is sheltering comb. The spider weaves her web, and flowers breathe to them a spirit, and their sweet perfume that gives them strength to toil. Now, 
Men and birds and bees and creeping things are deities made flesh. And how dare you kill anything? It is cruelty that makes the world awry. When men have learned that when they harm a living thing, they harm themselves, they surely would not kill, nor cause a thing that Allah has made to suffer pain. A lawyer said, I pray to Jesus, Tell who is this Allah you speak about? Where are his priests, his temples, and his shrines? And Jesus said, the Allah I speak about is everywhere. He cannot be compassed with walls, nor hedged about with bounds of any kind. All people worship Allah. Allah, the one, but all the people see him not alike. The universal Allah is wisdom, will, and love. All men see not the triune Allah. One sees him as Allah of might, another as Allah of thought, Another is Allah of love. A man's idea is his God, and so as man unfolds, his God unfolds. Man's God today, tomorrow is not God. The nations of the earth see Allah from different points of view, and so he does not see the same to everyone. He does not seem the same to everyone. Man named the part of Allah he sees, and this to him is all of Allah. And very nation sees a part of Allah. And every nation has a name for Allah. You Brahms call him Peri Abram. In Egypt, he is Thor, and Zeus, his name, and Zeus is his name in Greece. Jehovah is his Hebrew name, but everywhere his is the causeless cause, the rootless root, from which all things have grown. When men are afraid of Allah, and take him for a foe. They dress up their men in fancy garbs and call them priests and charge them to restrain the wrath of Allah by prayers. And when they fail to win his favor by their prayers, to buy him off with sacrifice of animals or birds. When man sees Allah as one with him, as Father Allah, he needs no middleman, no priest to intercede. He goes straight up to him and says, My Father, God, Allah. And then he lays his hands in Allah's own hand. And Allah is well. And this is Allah. You are each one a priest just for yourself and sacrifice of blood Allah does not want. Just give your life in sacrificial service to the all of life and Allah is pleased. When Jesus had thus said, he stood aside. The people were amazed but strove among themselves. Some said he is inspired by Holy Brahm, and others said he is insane, and others said he is obsessed. He speaks as devils speak. And Jesus tarried not. Among the guests was one 
a tiller of the soul, a generous soul, a seeker after truth, who loved the words that Jesus spoke. And Jesus went with him, and in his home abode. Okay. Islam. It is March the 16th, 2019. Um, someone has slightly tried to attack my genital in a sexual manner as I was reading my Moorish American um, state paper. I don't know, it's simultaneously in Annapolis Mill, I heard someone say stop. They did it very slightly. So uh, sometimes, when you, once again, when you deal with unclean spirits um, and they start to hear uh, something spiritual in reference to righteousness, they will um, behave in such manner. And, you, and the connection is this this science that is tele, tele uh, telepathic. Okay, so that's it um, for that reading.